I'm a multimedia artist. I like combining different materials and I like transforming materials. I like being influenced by different cultural artwork. I'm experimenting with wood as a media but also putting textile designs on the wood. So I try to mix it up. <laughs> I always wanted to be a ballerina. And my parents couldn't afford ballet lessons, and so uh, I wanted toe shoes so bad, <laughs> badly, that I, I thought, well, maybe I can make them. This was when I was about nine or 10. And so my mother showed me how to make paper mache out of newspaper and wheat paste. And so I, I wrapped my toe around and around with, with strips of newspaper and paste, and then I'd let that dry. And the next day, I put on another layer. And finally, I had about a quarter inch layer. It was just around the ends of my toes. And I let it harden, and it actually worked. I could get up on my toes. <laughs> my mother taught me how to sew when I was about 11, and I liked making doll clothes for a doll, not a baby doll, or, and that was before Barbie. So I, but I had a, a doll that had sort of a adult figure. I just sort of laid the, dress, the doll down on some scraps of fabric and sort of cut around to make the pattern. And I heard my mother talking to a friend of hers about my sewing um, the dresses, and she said, but she never finishes them. She never puts buttons on the back or zippers or anything. She just safety pins them together. And I thought, oh, my mother doesn't get it. It's not about having the dress finished and playing as dress up doll. It's about the solving problems and, and designing the, the dresses. So um, that was another characteristic of my work. I love the problem solving. And uh, so I often will set up some parameters for myself in how what what the quilt has to be or what the piece of that I'm making has to be. I went back to graduate school in the early 90s and one of the things I started thinking about was as I was studying textiles from different countries that if you live in an area where there are sheep, you make things out of wool. If you're in an area where you can grow cotton, you make cotton objects. If you have good clay, you are pottery. Well, I don't have sheep in my backyard. I don't have uh, good clay. Um, and I thought, well, what do I have? Well, I have lots of stuff in my mailbox. <laughs> And I'm constantly throwing away magazines and, and papers. So one day I just said, well, could I sew paper together? And so in about two hours I had a piece like this. It was very sloppy, but it was mostly about seeing what the sewing machine could do. This was made in 2007, I think. Um, I was working in conservation, and Carl Patterson was the conservator, and he had some um, funds and he suggested I make a quilt for the museum. And so we uh, went through a lot of ideas. And it has photographs in it and it has this, the center page which gives you the list of everything that's happening. And that's what these squares are. All the paper that is a reddish hue has been painted because, uh, because being a quilt with so many different colors in it. You need something to tie the whole piece together and you can you do shape, like the squares and the circles do that, but also color unifies the whole piece. And by putting a darker red border around the outside says this is, this is the edge of all this busyness. Stop here. One of the challenges at the first part was making these checkerboards because I knew they couldn't be flat white like the original paper and so I had to tint it and the first color came out too dark it was kind of too tan so I think I went through several different shades of color until I got something that looked white but wasn't white and one of the hardest part is putting the paper or the cloth edge around the outside because it's just the machine because everything is weighted off where the needle is and you really have to support it with tables and things and um, and 
it, it's sewn on the back and then it's fold, folded over and then you stitch along the edge and that's very tricky. Um, but I've learned, I've learned that I don't put my hands here, I put my hands way back here on the machine and it's easier to guide it. Right, and I get stuck. Um, sometimes, often in the middle, I discover that I have two different things here going and so I have to decide, am I going to go in this direction or in this direction? I have a piece at home that I'm just now finishing that I started in January and left for three, four months because I was stuck. <laughs> and then finally the idea comes to how to finish it. I sometimes used to push myself and say, oh, well, here, just do this. And I say, no, just wait. It'll come to you. And sometimes days later, often in the middle of the night, I'll get an aha moment. Or I'll be driving somewhere, and suddenly I'll see something, maybe a shape or a color or something. Oh, why don't I try that? So I learned that the answer will come. I it's it basically is trusting myself that eventually I... It'll come from me, not from, from me and how I see something else, and, and then I'll solve the problem.